Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this press conference from the annual meeting uh, of the World Economic Forum 2016 here in Davos, as the subtle uh, branding in the back has given away already, probably. Um, you're joining the press conference that is dedicated to the launch of the Humanitarian Impact Bond. And um, I'm uh, particularly pleased uh, for the World Economic Forum to be joined by two wonderful uh, experts uh, uh, and, and important voices in this, in this conversation. Uh, let me quickly introduce the panel to you. Uh, we're joined by Peter Maurer, the president of the International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, and uh, by Alexander de Croo, the deputy prime minister of Belgium and also minister for development. Thank you for being here. And without further ado, uh, Peter Maurer, over to you. What is the Humanitarian Impact Bond and what are you trying to achieve with it? Thank you very much and thanks for your, uh, your interest. Let me just uh, uh, broadly make only two introductory points, one to contextualize and one to describe uh, what it is as you, as you ask. To contextualize, let me say that uh, you have followed uh, the development of uh, enormous needs due uh, to conflict and violence worldwide and the huge gap that we humanitarian organizations are witnessing between uh, what we can do because we have the money to do it and what we should do because there are enormous needs. Uh, may I also recall that a couple of days ago, uh, the uh, high-level panel on the financing of humanitarian uh, uh, assistance presided over by the Vice President of the Euro Com European Commission, Kristalina Georgieva, has published uh, its report and recommendation on how to close that gap between uh, needs and possibilities as we witnessed uh, today. This report has been launched with recommendations to invest into fragility, to bridge the gap between humanitarian and development agencies, but also to foster uh, much more prominently uh, the private sector uh, and channel private sector money into uh, those needs. So this is the landscape uh, uh, with which uh, we are confronted today. Let me also say when I'm uh, traveling into fragile context, into violent, uh, uh, stricken countries and uh, regions, uh, one thing strikes me, uh, has struck me for the last couple of years. Disabled people are uh, those uh, triple, uh, which experience triple disadvantage. They are very often in the poorest context. They are experiencing violence, uh, have experienced violence, uh, which has destroyed uh, part of their physical ability uh, to work, and uh, they are often excluded from society. So the Humanitarian Impact Bond is uh, basically a special fund which we, uh, through which we try to raise money by social investors against a obligation and promise uh, f uh, to, for ICRC as an executing agency within five years to use that money to create centers for disabilities in fragile, uh, in fragile context. We want to raise uh, 35 million Swiss francs in order to create somehow between eight or 10 disability center which would considerably scale up our ability uh, to uh, service uh, populations in need. And we do measure over five years uh, the impact uh, of this money, and after five years, a outcome funder, most of the time governments would pay back uh, the social investors, and of course we would hope that the social investor would then uh, uh, again reinvest uh, into another loop of uh, social investment of those centers. Why is it so important to create that loop and to scale up? Today, we have 90 million people with disabilities worldwide in fragile context. Only 10% of those people get help. And amongst those 10%, ICRC ha is the largest provider of prosthesis uh, uh, and uh, physical disability services, reintegration training courses through uh, disability center. We think we should close that gap between the 10% uh, who receive uh, uh, services and the 90 million uh, who are uh, still waiting uh, for important uh, uh, social services, disability services to create. What would we do with the money exactly? We would 
the first two years create centers, train uh, most of the time uh, people who, have exper who are experiencing physical disabilities to uh, be employed in those centers, to run those uh, centers, and then also to attend to populations in need. And hopefully after five years we can have a clear indicator and indication of those who have been recycled into the work, uh, into, uh, uh, in, into productive work, into the, into the economy. Many countries lose as much as 0.75% uh, BDP uh, because of the unproductivity uh, of uh, disabled people who are not able anymore to do any, uh, uh, any work and uh, not to be part uh, of a normal uh, work life. So this is what the concept uh, is. We are launching it today. The uh, Belgian government, Alexander de Croo, is the first government who has been ready to jump on board. And both of us, uh, Alexander and myself, we will, over the next couple of weeks uh, uh, and month, uh, try to have uh, uh, come social investors and outcome funders uh, together. The preparations for launching the centers are well advanced. If we do get uh, the money together within the next couple of weeks, we can immediately start to uh, build three, uh, three centers who are, which are shovel uh, ready and four or five others which are uh, far advanced in the planning and which would come on board. Alex. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister, so your, your government is showing leadership and, and joining this initiative. Tell us why. Well, first of all, if you, I, I think Peter explained very well the, the huge humanitarian needs that we have that we have today. Um, Belgian development policy last year, the budget for humanitarian aid was the highest we have ever had. This year, we will increase it even uh, even further. By far, this is not uh, this is not enough, and and we are convinced that capital exists, especially in Western Europe. The capital is there. And people are willing to invest in, uh, in, in things which have a so social, uh, social outcome. So our first objective is to attract other types of, uh, of financing. The second objective is uh, to make sure that the humanitarian interventions we do, that we maximize the quality, that we ma maximize the impact. And I think this is the balance of, the, of, of, the new of this innovation that we have here. You attract an other type of, uh, of financing, and in exchange for that, the uh, operator, being the uh, ICRC here, commits to achieving an, a, a certain level of, uh, of quality and of having, uh, having an impact. I think that is the reason why we're, uh, we're investing in, uh, in this, because it's, uh, it's a new way of structuring things, and it's, um, it's much more committal than it used to be in the, in the past. Now, we don't say that because we're not happy with what the ICRC was doing uh, up to now. I think we've had a great relationship over the last um, over the last years, but I think that's the direction that uh, funding for humanitarian uh, interventions should go. And we're really very, very proud and grateful that the ICRC is uh, is, is jumping on this and is is taking leadership role in uh, in this. Can I maybe just uh, make a last point because uh, rightly so, Alexander uh, has mentioned uh, impact as. Uh, uh, the critical issue here, uh, part of this uh, launch of a humanitarian impact bond uh, is also that uh, we uh, have organized for uh, an independent uh, evaluator. So the criteria that we uh, propose to use as uh, numbers of, uh, uh, of protheses uh, and or theses delivered and number of people recycled into productive economy, that all these uh, numbers uh, will be measured independently by independent evaluators uh, and of course to give credibility uh, to this important issue politically that uh, we, uh, we have investment for impact uh, which is uh, delivered and measured independently. Thank you very much. Um, let me let me ask you. So you have uh, the first commitment here from from the public sector. We have about 1,500 business leaders here in Davos. Um, what's your sense? Is the awareness high enough for the, for for the issue there, or uh, should we should we uh, maybe uh, 
sound a call for action here uh, for our 1500 business leaders in Davos? Well, we all hope this press conference is going to be the start of, uh, of a lot of conversations with the private sector on this. Um, what we've understood is that um, investors are interested in this, uh, first of all, because it's a combination of a social impact, but also a financial return, but also because <coughs> there is definitely a certain risk for the private investor in this. But this risk is actually, for example, for insurance firms, it's an interesting risk in the sense that this risk is completely uncorrelated with the risk, for example, on the capital markets. Mm -hmm. So it's a very good way of div diversifying the risk in the, uh, financial, uh, in the financial sector. And that is definitely one advantage besides the fact that, um, of course, we've understood over the last days that the business community is completely aware of the fact that they have a role to play and that the role to play is also to our societal uh, impact. Mm -hmm. I have been rather encouraged by the first reactions that we have uh, already seen informally, and I hope that uh, more reactions will, uh, will coming forward uh, from, from the business sector. I think there is one critical issue I wanted uh, to highlight here. I think there is and will remain a general expectation from the private sector that with regard to urgent crisis response in natural disaster or conflict, governments will remain in the lead of supporting humanitarian organizations. We have taken out of this part, the urgent immediate part, we have taken out the more structural, long-term, almost uh, systemic aspect of a humanitarian assistance program, which is assisting dis disabled people who have been disabled through violent and conflict. And we build a financial product around a specific area of work which is much more long-term than short, immediate response, which will remain uh, dependent on funding by the public sector, uh, by the public sector in the future. So uh, uh, I wanted uh, just to offer this as an additional explanation. Thank you very much. So it looks like uh, much work is to be done, but we do have the, the model in place and we, we do have the tools to do this. Um, well, maybe just to, to add, this is, uh, it, it's a premiere. I mean, it's the first time that a multi-country uh, humanitarian impact bond is created. Um, and uh, we, we're very proud uh, to be both pioneers in, uh, in, in this. And, uh, if if uh, if we get this into action, I'm convinced that this uh, this is going to work. This is really changing the way humanitarian interventions will be financed, and uh, and I hope uh, one day we can look back on today. Thank you. Um, we have a question here from the floor. Let's open up. Uh, we have a microphone. If you could state your name and organization for the sake of our online audience, please. Thank you. Hello, uh, Bart Haak. <coughs> I work for the Belgian Business Daily, the Tate. Could you explain how this will work, uh, this new system? Who will emit the bond? Uh, how will it be repaid and under what conditions? Well, of course, uh, the details of uh, uh, the uh, manager of the bond and the repayment has to be negotiated with the, with the social investors. What we have created is now the outline, the, the structure, and uh, as soon as we have social investors and uh, a company, we, we have possibilities then uh, to decide about the fund manager. Uh, we will decide on the fund manager, and, uh, uh, but at the present moment, uh, this is too, too premature uh, yet to, to say who will manage uh, and under what exactly conditions. We have an idea on what the impact baseline is for ICRC, what we can reasonably achieve as an ambitious impact over five years. Because we have been in uh, disability for 30 years, and because we are, uh, have seen all, all continents and all situations, we have a relatively good idea uh, what a realistic impact uh, impact is. And we have formulated the sort of average of last 10 years that we achievables, and we have added uh, some uh, additional uh, ambitious features uh, in that because of 
Uh, we hope that we get uh, better and faster as we, uh, as we move forward. So this is the baseline, and, uh, and then we will see about the fund manager and the exact conditions of repayment. Thank you very much. Um, we have a question from the gentleman in the back there. Giovanni Stringa, Il Corriere della Sera newspaper in Italy. I just didn't get one point, sorry. Uh, you said that you are going to repay the bond in five years. Uh, with what money? You get the money from the government you are invest in, in whose country you are investing in. No, is no, that no, right? No. No, no. So, so the, how it works is, is at the start, uh, the intervention is financed by the private sector. Um, if the objectives are achieved, there is a repayment to the private sector with a certain premium, and that is coming from the donor countries, and Belgium is one of the donor countries. Right? This, is, this is how it functions. Now, you could say, why as a donor country, why would you step in such a, such uh -huh. a, such a construction? Well, a few reasons. First of all, as Peter uh, indicated, the level of quality and of impact of the intervention is higher than it, than, it, than it used to be. That is because we count on a lot of innovation and creativity in achieving the goals that are actually much stricter than in a regular uh, situation. Second element for a donor country is spreading r the risk. Because if the goals are not achieved, then as a donor country, the payout is actually lower. And this is a way of spreading the risk between the private sector and uh, a government donor. Okay, but uh, the investments of the fund are going to be made in which country? We will in certainly... In the donor countries or in other countries? No, 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 no. not in, in Belgium, not in Belgium, not okay. in the donor The investments country. will be made in the fragile context, to give you an example. Uh, uh, I mean, we, ha as I mentioned beforehand, we have planned to be able to start as soon as first social investments are coming in, and that's the reason why in countries like Central African Republic or, um, or Afghanistan, Yemen, we have already shovel-ready new disability center which ca we can start immediately as soon as social investment is coming forward and as soon as we have the matching outcome funding from, uh, from governments. So uh, this will, uh, th th the preparations is all conflict and fragile societies and is in basically in the logic of uh, ICRC's uh, uh, priorities. And once again, the importance here is, again, to, to have for a part, a specific part of humanitarian work, offering it to the private sector to fund, while other parts uh, will, be ha will have uh, uh, be taken over still by uh, public finance. Thank you very much. We have uh, time for one last question here in the middle, please. <coughs> Dries de Smet uh, from the Belgian newspaper De Standaard. Uh, a question, um, this is not something you invent out of the blue, so where did the idea originally came from? Well, um, uh, social impact bonds, of, of course, are not new. Uh, there, there's uh, examples, uh, for example, in, in, uh, in uh, reintegration of people who were in prison in the, in the UK, even in, in Belgium, there's been a social, uh, social impact uh, bond. Uh, of course, um, in, in those impact bonds, the return is basically coming from uh, a lowering of the expenses in the social security, uh, for example. That in the, in the fragile states where we work is, is, is not a form of payout that is, uh, that is, that is possible, so we had to elaborate another, uh, another system and the system here is that actually a donor is, in that, uh, is put in that, uh, in that situation. The um, impact bond offers itself as uh, quite an attractive idea to respond to what I would consider, and ICRC has experienced as a big transformation in uh, private donor activity. If I look back 10 years, uh, private donor activity would have been uh, hand handouts or additions to public money uh, to a program which was defined and negotiated with the government. Today, I think uh, there is a lot of private money ready to be invested, but the private sector wants to see an impact, uh, wants to have a stake uh, in this project. 
And I think this is the whole difference that here we are proposing, uh, we, we are proposing a format of finance which uh, gives the satisfaction of impact and the transparency of impact measurement to the social investor. And I think uh, because you asked me how we had the idea, it was basically our experience of a, of a transformation of the private uh, donor landscape together with mechanics of social uh, bonds which uh, have been developed in certain European countries, the UK, Belgium, as you mentioned, Alexander, uh, which have, uh, on which we have modeled around uh, this uh, idea of a humanitarian impact bond. Thank you very much. Um, I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank you very much for being here today, for watching, and a special thank you to our panel. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Thank you.